So thank you everyone for joining me today. My name is Michael Smith. I'm the National Consumer Education Manager of Genome Canada. And yes, I'm back at the Genome Sewing and Learning Center for another uh, Genome's Magical Machine Mystery Tour. So what will the machine be today? Well, we'll find out. <laughs> So let me flip this around. So there, oh yes, Tanya's beautiful artwork, as always. So for our big reveal of Janome's Magical Machine Mystery Tour, the fabulous machine. Oh, I don't want to step on anything. <laughs> I've got to move the camera. Lovely, ta-da, this hat's for the build-up. What is the machine today? Ooh, way back to see it all. It is the fabulous Janome HD9. As you can imagine, HD stands for heavy duty. If you are looking for a machine that will basically go through anything, uh, certainly if you're gonna be doing all these, you know, tote bags that are so popular and you wanna sew thicker, heavier layers, you wanna sew through leather, you want to make like a boat cover or a barbecue you cover anything sort of heavy duty like that uh, this is the machine for you it is the most industrial like machine in the Janome line now again Janome machines are still for domestic use uh, they're not industrial but again this is the most industrial like in the line uh, in fact if you go to some dry cleaners uh, and alteration shops and you look around, oh, they may have an HD9 or they have the uh, predecessor, the 1600P. P stands for professional. So yes, the HD9 uh, professional uh, as well is also in the professional line. Again, the most industrial-like machine that we have, very heavy duty, all metal bed. Uh, like all Janome machines, the machine starts off as an aluminum skeleton, solid cast aluminum skeleton, and then again, all the pretty pieces are added to it. But the HD9 and the predecessor of the 1600P just like the 6700 and 6650, all metal bed here. So very beautiful. Again, will last uh, indefinitely. <laughs> uh, certainly it it's, uh, packs quite a punch. Uh, this machine as well is 1600 stitches per minute. So nice and fast. It is a straight stitch only, but then I don't like using the word only because people think it's limited. So I want to go over some things uh, to show you the versatility with this machine. Now, I did talk about the HD9 previously on Janome's Magical Machine Mystery Tour. Oh, I think it was last December. Uh, so you can go back to the Janome HQ uh, IGTV icon on the Janome HQ Instagram page, or you can check out the Janome HQ YouTube channel for that previous video of the HD9. But yes, let's take a little tour of the machine. So with the fabulous HD9, one thing I will point out right away, because I often forgot, oh, Julian is here. Oh my gosh, Julian, it's been forever since I've seen you. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I often neglect to uh, point out, you know, a lot of our Janome machines come with a dust cover of one kind or another. So this is the one for the HD9. It's a vinyl cover. It's got the black piping and little black, uh, you know, detail along the bottom here. Now, if you think, oh, well, I'd like something a little more jazzier. This is just a plain white vinyl, but it'll certainly keep the dust off when you're not using the machine. But, you know, even you can take this dust cover and or any dust cover that comes with your machine and you can use this as your template you can either just measure it as it is or even rip it apart and use it as your pattern and then you can make a fabric one or a leather one or whichever kind of dust cover that you wish so i think that's cool so again this comes with the machine now, of course, we also have the instruction manual, and this instruction manual is in French and Spanish and English. <laughs> so again, there's lots of good detailed instructions. It goes through everything, how to thread the machine, how to care for the machine, uh, how to oil the machine, everything, as well as how to adjust the tension, some suggestions there. So lots of information here. 
Uh, of course, online, check out genomi.ca and genomi.com for more information on this machine. And in fact, uh, Sam, our Genomi America educator, uh, Sam did a Facebook Live on the Genomi sewing machine page yesterday. It's like he and I were, were attuned <laughs> and thinking, we want to talk about the HD9. So Sam did a, a Facebook Live from the Genomi sewing machines Facebook page. So you can go there to review Sam's presentation. and. Uh, uh, their um, genome maker JP Alfano also did a bunch of uh, genome uh, sewing machines uh, Facebook lives too on the HD9 so lots of information to be had now I will get back to the accessories guide in a minute so yes we're gonna talk about again there's so much to talk about I'll jump all over the place so we'll talk about ooh, the fabulous accessories included in your machine so the HD 9 is the updated version of the previous model that was you know high speed heavy duty was the 1600 P and when people said, oh, how does the HD9 differ from the 1600P? Well, one thing is this big, beautiful, extra big foot pedal here that this is similar to the foot pedal that, again, the, um, the Continental M7 comes with and the 6700 comes with and the 9400 comes with. The HD9 comes with this big, extra large foot pedal as well. The 1600P uh, did not. Now, this foot pedal, though, does um, uh, attach a little bit differently for the HD9. You'll see this foot pedal ooh, right here, this little plug. Again, this is how it goes into the uh, M7 and, and 6700, all the other foot pedals. Uh, the big extra large foot pedal in the other machines attaches this way. But the HD9, ooh, the HD9 extra big foot pedal, if I can remove this uh, without standing up. The HD9 foot pedal has a, oh, if I can get that undone, it's so secure. <laughs> there we go. You see how that is slightly different there of how it attaches. So this is very uh, distinct for the HD9 of how it plugs into the machine like that. So that is good. And then, ooh, speaking of extra large foot pedals, if you need some help keeping that extra large foot pedal or any foot pedal in place, <gasps> yes, I've talked about this fabulous board, this non-slip foot pedal pad, previously on Genome HQ Magical Machine Mystery Tour. Ooh, it's so big. It is a uh, 14 by 10. So it is the so comfortable, there we go, so comfortable non-slip foot pedal pad. Again, you put your foot pedal on that and it just locks it into place so it doesn't slip all over the place. So that is available for your HD9 and for all of your machines. But yes, the HD9 comes with this uh, cute little accessory case here. And in it, oh yes, you've got some fabulous goodies. Uh, now, since we have a telescoping, ooh, let's go way up here. Since we have a telescoping thread stand, like all the big um, heavy duty, uh, you know, high power machines, like again, the Continental M7, 6700P, 6600, uh, all the industrial machines out in the garment industry, they all have that telescoping uh, thread stands. And it, included with the HD9 is this cone adapter. So if you're going to use a big cone, like our fabulous Madeira Aero Quilt thread available from your Genome dealer, again, we've got the cone adapter. So then this you would put on your spool pin. There's two spool pins at the back of the machine. You put on the spool pin and then you put your cone over it. So again, this uh, cone adapter then comes with the machine and then you can uh, purchase uh, more as well. If one happens to break or you lose it, you can get these separately as well from your Genome dealer. So that just slips on there. So again, you can use nice big cones of thread like this Madeira Aero Quilt. Uh, so that's a good thing. Um, you can use a variety of threads uh, with this machine, certainly. And again, for that heavy duty quality, you might be using a very thick, heavy duty thread. So you can use that on this machine, no problem. Oh, since it's Leia, hello, it is great to see you. Uh, also included a little thread net to go over the 
spool if needed to again help uh, keep your thread in line, your little spool cap, a uh, pack of needles, and you'll see very importantly they say HL times five. Now HL is a big German word that I won't even bother to pronounce, <laughs> uh, but it basically means like high powered, heavy duty. These are still flat backed needles like all domestic sewing machine needles have the flat back whereas the industrial sewing machine needles and the long arm sewing machine needles those are rounded but these are still flat backed but they need to be these h l times five that are again very heavy duty they're sturdier they're thicker to hand uh to handle uh to stand up to the the high speeds uh, again we're 1600 stitches per minute with this machine uh only the long arms are faster so that's uh going you know pretty fast so that's why we need these hl times five uh heavy duty needles uh, we've got our little tools, of course, like the screwdrivers and the brush that come with so many machines. Now, the bobbins, uh, these are definitely different for most Janome machines. You know, we use our plastic Janome J bobbins, but with the HD9, we're using these metal bobbins. And these are 1.4 times bigger than the average bobbin. So you can wind a lot more thread on this. You won't be changing your bobbin as frequently, so that's good. Now, the uh, HD9 has a separate bobbin case as well. Now, this one is for the 1600P. And again, when people ask, how, how does the 1600P differ from the newer HD9? So the HD9 still has the bobbin case like this, but again, the bobbin is way bigger, as you will see. So this is a 1600p bobbin here on the left and the the bright silver and ooh the hd9 ones are the the like brass color and again they're bigger they're 1.4 times bigger so you can get a lot more thread on them uh, would these heavy duty needles work in other machines if we do heavier projects uh, they would i think technically yes they should they should fit uh, again i don't think you would really need to use them, but I think it would be okay to use them. I've never tried to use uh, the HL times five needles in other machines. Um, again, I don't think you'd really need to because uh, they're not going as, as fast. Uh, if you need a heavier duty needle, for example, we do have the um, oh, denim needle size 16 or leather needle size 18. So those needles you could use in the regular domestic machines uh, if you need a sturdier, thicker needle. Uh, so this is the bobbin. Now again, this is the 1600p bobbin, but uh, the HD9 is threaded the same way. You know, normally with all of our other Janome machines, we want to form the little P here, so the thread comes off to the left. But for these high-speed industrial-like machines, and the long arms are the, are the same, we want to turn that bobbin around. So now it's being threaded uh, clockwise. So the thread is coming off clockwise. So when we have the bobbin case facing us, the bobbin goes in and then there's a little groove up and around the tension spring like that. So then that is now threaded and then this will clip into the bobbin case uh, or into the hook race. Uh, it's in the bobbin case and then it will clip into the hook race. So again, different than Janome, uh, most other Janome machines. This has a oscillating hook, which means that it's uh, vertical, as opposed to the lay-in kind, which is rotary. So yes, yeah, so that comes included with the machine, a bunch of bobbins. Now this fabulous rolled hem foot, the D foot, comes with the machine as well. Now I demoed the rolled hem uh, foot, uh, technique on the, uh, what was the A to Z with Janome series? The D episode is the rolled hem foot. So I demonstrated how to use this foot. Here is the foot for the HD9. So yes, you can even do beautiful, delicate things like, oh yes, this, you know, chiffon and organdy. Think of like bridesmaids dresses. Think of formal wear, you know, even, or linens. Think of tablecloths and napkins for their little 
rolled hem. It's about three millimeters. So look at that of how beautiful that is. So even delicate fabrics we could use on these high speed uh, machines, high speed industrial like machines. So there's your uh, rolled hem. So that's fabulous. Now also included, oh, this cloth guide. I absolutely love it. And this little screw that screws on to the bed of the machine. Now you'll see our needle plate here also has some handy guides on it. So there's a, right here, there's a quarter of an inch, for example. There's a half of an inch, uh, five eighths would be right here. Three quarters, one inch. So again, a lot of convenient markings or in centimeters as well that are down here. So depending on uh, what system of measure you are, uh, so yes, this cloth guide, again, we, I'm just going to butt it up to my foot and I'm going to do a quarter inch piecing. So if you're a garment sewer, this machine is for you. If you're a quilter, this machine is for you. I'm going to secure this cloth guide in play and then I'm going to raise the foot. Now, again, if you're going to be sewing uh, thicker, heavier layers, we do have the extra high presser foot lift as well. I just uh, hold it up a little more. That raises up almost half of an inch. So again, great when we're going to be doing, um, you know, uh, constructing the bags and uh, anything that's very bulky, the, you know, boat covers, all of that. So we have that extra high presser foot lift to accommodate that. But so now I'm going to take my quarter inch or my, my strips, and now I'm going to be doing my quarter inch piecing. So there we go. And then, oh, I can get way back here. Now we do have on the machine, we do have a speed control. So if 1600 stitches per minute is a little fast for you, again, just turn it down, no problem. So a slow, medium, or super fast. Isn't that amazing? Like how quick, how easy you can do. And you'll see no pins. I'm just holding the end of my strip there. We do have the big reverse button here and we do have a scissor button as well. So when I get to the end of my seam, I can do a little reverse. And then I can use my scissor button here and then lock, raise it, and then boom. So there, my big long strip is done. How simple, how quick is easy is that? Oh, Grandma Craw, it's great to see you. So that is fabulous. It's like a bullet train. Yes, it is. And very fast and very smooth and really not that noisy either. So that's another great thing uh, to the Janome machines uh, because they are so well packed and so well engineered. Uh, this machine could be going all day long and no one's going to say, oh my gosh, is that a freight train? No, it just is as fast as a freight train, but certainly not as noisy. So yeah, so that's some uh, things that come included with the machine. Now also included is this little vial of oil. Now once this little vial of oil is done, did you know Janome also has, oh look, Janome sewing machine oil. So you can get this from your Janome dealer as well. And I love it that this has got telescoping little uh, and so you can really get right down where you need that oil. The instruction manual goes through how to oil this machine. And because it is, again, very industrial like that, yes, it needs um, oil. So consult your manual on where and when. But basically a little drop right in that little hole, a little drop, oops, in that hole there. And then here in your bobbin area. This is so cool. You lift up this plate and then this little trap door opens. So then here is your, oh, if I can get down in here, this is your bobbin area down in there. There's your bobbin, separate bobbin case. And you're going to just put a little bit of oil in around the hook. And then, oh, you can see just a little drop of oil Ooh, right there. <laughs> There's a little uh, felt pad. You're just gonna put a drop or two there and you're gonna put a drop or two of oil 
when you remove the bobbin case in the hook itself, and that's it. Again, the manual goes over everything, but it's so simple. Uh, when people think, oh no, these, uh, again, industrial-like machines, they must be so complicated. They're so simple. It's so easy to do. So again, just a little bit of maintenance, and the machine is going to last and last. Now, of course, you're still going to take this to your Janome dealer, you know, to be serviced regularly, but especially again with the COVID restrictions and lockdown, uh, you, there's a lot of maintenance you can do yourself to keep your machine going. So always construct, uh, consult your manual. Now, also I wanted to point out, here's our fabulous knee lifter. It comes with so many of our machines, but did you know, and you know, the knee lifter is great because this is a manual presser foot lift. So I have to like, you know, reach around and lift the presser foot. But this knee lifter here, if we move the knee lifter away, then you'll see, oh yes, that's raising and lowering the presser foot. So isn't that great? But I wanted to point out because this, uh, the knee lifters, you know, come with so many of our machines. If you loosen this screw that's on top of the knee lifter, you can angle the knee lifter so it's, it's closer to you. So if you'll see right now, the knee lifter is just like straight down. So if I loosen up this screw, then I can move the knee lifter a little more forward and that's gonna change this angle. So I've already loosened my screw and again, I just tug it forward. So do you see, boom, now all of a sudden this is now closer to my knee. So it will be easier for me. It'll have more response to it then if it's back in the original position, you know, see it's a little further away from my knee. So maybe I'll have to tuck my chair over a little more to the right. So if we just, uh, again, loosen that screw, move the knee lifter forward, and then boom, there we go. So it's like, that's such a simple adjustment. And again, can be made to uh, any of the knee lifters that come with the machine. So that makes it again, a little more responsive uh, that maybe you don't need to move your chair over uh, as much and that it um, again is a little bit more response. Uh, another improvement tool oh, you can barely see here, the beautiful uh, LED lighting, uh, another improvement of the 1600P and the HD9. Uh, the HD9 then got some beautiful LED lighting, you know, all of our machines uh, going forward, you know, brighter lighting is uh, one big request. And certainly as, you know, I'm getting up there in years too, uh, I appreciate um, the improved lighting. So we've got LED lighting in the bed of the machine and as well here around in the needle area. Now this needle area is very special. You will see again, another reminder of the HL times five. Again, we don't want to use the round needles. We want the flat flat back household needles, but we need them to be those HL, those very heavy duty needles. And there's uh, these two threading guides or through two threading charts because the HD9, uh, how it differs than the 1600P is it has this new improved uh, threading guide for um, those thicker threads. If you're using like a thick nylon thread, for example, to do some, oh, like boat covers, for example, then um, there's a little guide up here. And again, the manual explains how to thread it all uh, for that. So that was one of the, um, the big uh, differences as well between those machines. There's a knob up here to adjust. This little gauge is for your presser foot pressure so you can raise or lower it as needed. So that's always good. And of course, the side cutter that I think is included in all Janome machines, which is fabulous. Uh, but yes, also we've got ooh, needle up and down and then our bobbin button because I wanted to talk about, ooh, let me set this down again because of our, this is where again, Tanya, I need you. <laughs> it's so awkward filming alone. Uh, I'm trying to get used to it though. Uh, so yes, when we have our telescoping thread stand, which is right here, telescoping thread stand, and we have two spool pins, as you will see over here. I have some fabulous Helos Iris uh, cotton quilting thread that I use quite frequently. And 
I'm going to try to raise this up so you can see. There we go. Oh, there. That's a little better. There we go. So yes, when we go to wind our bobbin, so how cool that we have one uh, spool pin threaded for the needle. And then, ooh, I've got this other blue thread for the bobbin. Now, how I've always wound my bobbins, the instruction manual explains how to do this too, but the way I've always wound my bobbins for the last 30 years is sliding the thread through that little notch, putting it down on the bobbin uh, little pin, and then it clicks into place, click that into place, uh, and then I touch my little bobbin button, but I like to turn the speed down, especially as we're just starting to wind the bobbin. And even we can click that bobbin button again to stop it, to then say, okay, is the thread, uh, the thread is uh, winding correctly. Nothing is, is jumping out of the, the way it's, it's stacking the way it's supposed to. Oh my gosh, Terry is here. Hello. It is great to see you. So once I know that, yes, it's, it's winding correctly, then we can turn it on again. And then if we want to turn up the speed, then we can do that. Once we know it is all uh, winding correctly. And, you know, even if we want to only partially wind the bobbin too, we don't always have to fill the bobbin. Let's say if I'm using ooh, some hot pink uh, thread and normally I don't, you know, sew with hot pink. I don't want to wind that whole bobbin. There's no need to. I can just hit that little bobbin button again to turn it on and then now ooh, it's off and the little illumination light goes away so how simple is that and of course i take my beautiful <gasps> janome mini duckling scissors you know how i love these trim off my thread boom away we go like so simple so easy now if we do fill up the bobbin though again we've got um uh, 1.4 times uh, bigger bobbin so isn't that wonderful that we can really get a lot of thread on there so some other fabulous uh, features for this machine is so versatile. And again, even though, oh, so many people say, oh, that it's a straight stitch only, but you can still do so much with it. So when I'm doing my seaming, for example, I've just done a usual, oh, I'll do it this way. I've just done a usual five eighths of an inch seam. But then in order to finish off the edge here, you know, we can't do a, a zigzag. So instead I just folded under some of the seam allowance to do what's called a clean finish. So then that edge is not going to ravel and it would just lay like that. So you just simply, you know, fold this over here and do a little line of stitching. Again, so simple, and then click. So that is one way to finish off your seams. Again, very beautifully is again that clean finish. So that's just a straight stitch. Or how about doing your, again, regular seam, but then here I bound it with this little bit of fabric. Uh, this is typically bias binding. Uh, this is what's known as a Hong Kong finish. So I bound the edge of the fabric and then I just did some stitch in the ditch that you can just barely see that red thread. So again, there's on the, the back side. So that's a good way to finish off, especially particularly like a unlined blazer, let's uh, especially now in this beautiful weather. So then this Hong Kong finish would be a great way to finish your seams. And again, I don't need a, a zigzag. I don't need a, a serger or anything. You can do it all on your HD9. Now, certainly again, heavy duty. Oh yes, here we've got some vinyl. So definitely we can go through that vinyl, that leather again, like a hot knife through butter. Uh, and in fact, it was seeing this machine in action uh, when I was working with one of the dealers um, that made me fall in love with it. I actually purchased an HD, uh, HD9 for myself because I absolutely loved it. And I've been doing a lot of, again, uh, like tote bags and all these little shaving bags that I was making. So that's definitely one reason why I loved the machine. Now this I demoed the last time I uh, talked about the HD9. I, I did this little demo that I started again when we're doing multi-level sewing uh, with thicker layers. Here is some of that vinyl. 
And then, you know, when we do our tote bags, we often has like a stiffener layer to it to help hold that, that uh, body. So I sewed through. Again, there's one layer of the vinyl, but then now I'm going through that thicker um, layer that would typically be like for the, the bottoms of the bag to give it some stability. And then this is like a foamy, puffier layer that again just adds some uh, body to the bag. And then I'm sewing through, oh, another piece of vinyl. So that's going through no problem at all. Now, the fun thing about this HD9 like most Janome machines, is all the accessories that you can get with it. So we went over what is included with the machine, but yes, when we check out our Janome accessory guide, we're going to flip through and see each of the machines are categorized so they're by a letter. So we scroll through and down here M is the high speed models. Now there's the 1600P, again, the predecessor of the HD9, but we're looking for M for the high speed models. Uh, do you need leather needles? Uh, no, you don't need leather needles specifically. If you're sewing leather, it's recommended uh, to use leather needles, but uh, you know, most of these, uh, the HL times five, there's like a size 11 and a size 14, most commonly, uh, those will go through, depending on the grade of leather, the thickness of leather, uh, those will go through just fine uh, on their own. So as we're flipping through the various feet, and then again, we've got all of the, the presser feet here. So let's say, oh, the ditch quilting foot. And we see here's the parts numbers. And then, oh, look, there's an M. Here is the parts number. So this is the number that you would give your dealer and say, hey, I would love this ditch quilting foot for my HD9. Or if you have the 6700P, uh, again, with that as well. And, oh, ditch quilting. Let me find it. Here we go. Ditch quilting for DB hook models. And there's the ditch quilting foot. It has a little uh, rudder down the side, a little rudder down the middle there that uh, will help you again quilt uh, in the ditch, stitch in the ditch. So it's just like the ditch quilting uh, foot that for the uh, other machines, the snap-on kind, but this has its own ankle. This is something that's very different for these high-speed, most industrial-like machines, Oops, is that they have the foot attached. You will see this is the HP foot that is available for some of the regular domestic machines. And you'll see uh, the big difference, it's not a snap-on foot, it is attached to the ankle. So this HP foot came about because, oh, look at this foot. You know, again, it's all attached. The ankle and the foot are attached. This is definitely um, a very industrial-like foot. All the machines in the garment industry have this little, narrow, beautiful quarter of an inch foot uh, where the ankle is attached. So your ditch quilting foot is like that. Or again, look at this little narrow straight stitch foot. Look at how little that is and how great that would be for like a, a edge stitching, let's say. So that is available. And again, in the blister pack. So what you're looking for is DB hook models. Now I'm not sure what the DB stands for. Uh, I'm thinking maybe dual balance or something to do with the, the motor, but you're looking for DB hook models, uh, which means it is that, that high speed uh, straight stitch, the 1600P or the HD9. Uh, oh, if the needles Michael showed are flat back, they should work. Uh, yes, exactly. Um, that you want to make sure that they are flat back needles. Uh, that yes, we have the ooh, concealed zipper foot. Now I demoed the concealed zipper on, or the invisible zipper as it's sometimes called. Uh, I demoed that on the A to Z with Janome series. It's the, the Z or the Z episode. Uh, of that series that I demoed a concealed zipper. And this is the same. Uh, again, it's uh, the foot and the ankle are attached, but it's the same concealed zipper foot basically as the others. Uh, let's see. So then we've got, ooh, things like this in uh, adjustable zipper foot. 
we've got so many different um, feet and accessories available so you can double check again with your Janome dealer or things like oh yes the quarter inch seam foot and there's that little black guide with the quarter inch seam foot so again uh, there's basically so many feet available for your HD9 just like there is for your other Janome machines <coughs> oh excuse me it's definitely getting dry in here now also I wanted to point out there are some fabulous kits available for your HD9 like this leather kit and it has some of those HL times five needles with it. It has things like the uh, roller foot and the ultra glide foot. Uh, those I demoed as well on Genome HQ. So you can check those out. Or we also have the garment kit with the velvet foot, for example. Oh, and with that concealed zipper foot. And again, some more needles, the adjustable seam guide. Uh, there's also a piecing kit. There's a ruler uh, quilting kit, because then yes, there is a ruler foot. Everyone always loves ruler quilting. So yes, there is a quarter inch ruler foot set for again, the high speed straight stitch models. It has a separate uh, uh, darning plate, basically. It, it's thicker, it's higher, uh, because you cannot drop the feed dogs. That's a question I get asked all the time. Can you drop the feed dogs to this machine? No, you can't drop the feed dogs. But with your ruler foot, for example, your needle plate is thicker. So you're gonna remove this needle plate and put on the, the other needle plate that is a little higher. So that uh, completely bypasses the feed dogs. The feed dogs are not in, in play at all. So that's very cool. So you can do free motion quilting. You can do ruler quilting with this machine. Again, there's so many things you can do, so much versatility to this machine. It's not just straight stitch. Uh, one thing I loved doing was, this is some scuba knit. Look at all that stretch. And you may think, oh, in order to do stretch sewing, I have to have a serger. Well, of course, I love our Janome serger, so I think, yes, everyone should have a serger. But, you know, the great thing about this high-speed machine is because the feeding power of the machine is so good uh, that the knits really do not stretch like they, they may uh, on other machines. We can always lighten the pressure, meaning the, the number is going to go up. We can also, there is a ooh, stitch length dial here. So right now I've got it at a three. I could turn it down or I could turn it up as well. So depending on what you're seaming. So a longer stitch length, especially when you're going to go through multiple layers, will also help. So definitely experiment and see maybe you don't need, you know, your serger for sewing knits. Maybe you need a straight stitch uh, high speed machine and it will feed it through uh, quicker so there's not as much stretching. Uh, if I just press this with the iron very uh, gingerly. That's gonna, again, um, press everything down in place like nothing is stretched out of shape. It, it's very simple that way. And again, we still have that stretch that I did uh, light, or I did um, lengthen the stitch. So we still have that stretch. So again, how easy is that? So, so much that you can do with your fabulous HD9. There we go. So yes, go double check with your fabulous Janome dealer and go back to review again the previous uh, Janome Magical Machine Mystery Doer I did on the HD9. And let me flip this around. And yeah, so definitely time to say goodbye. Again, the time just goes by so quickly. I would always love to stay and do more and more because it's so much fun. Uh, but yes, you'll hopefully come back for another uh, Janome's Magical Machine Mystery Tour next week. What will we be talking about today? Well, I don't know. It's a mystery. But thank you everyone for joining me today. It's always fabulous to see you all. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the afternoon. Thank you for joining me. Happy sewing. <laughs> Bye.